Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Connected Core. Let's start out on all fours, actually. Okay. So Hannah's behind me. You can just follow along to what I'm telling you to do, or if you need a little bit of a cue, she'll be right behind me. Um, if at any point you can't hear me or you have a question, you can type in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Um, we're going to start out with just a few cat cows just to um, warm up the spine into flexion and extension. So hands are in that beautiful bird dog position where all 10 of your fingers are pointing straight ahead at 10 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, at 10 o'clock. <laughs> fingers pointing straight ahead at 12 o'clock. All right, we got a couple more people joining us. Your um, elbows are slightly bent. There's a softness to them. They're not locked out. The inner creases of your elbows are pointing in towards the midline, towards each other. They're not pointing straight ahead of you. And you're rounding your back by tucking your tailbone and arching between the shoulder blades not in the mid back, a little bit higher up in between those shoulder blades. And then dropping down, let, letting gravity sink down. Um, take your belly as low to the ground as possible and stretching up through, all the way up through the neck, getting the chin up to the ceiling as high as possible. Just a few of these just to get things warmed up. And then we're gonna go into a thoracic spine twist to open up our upper torso before we get everything nice and stable. Sometimes you do have to mobilize things a little bit. So Hannah's gonna put, I'm gonna have her start with your right hand. Stay in all fours. She's gonna stay in all fours and she's gonna put, sorry, left hand, there you go. Left hand on the back of your head. Mm -hmm. So now we've taken, we've just taken one support. Left hand on the back of your head. Monty, back of your head. Good. Nope. Up. Back of the head. So in this position, you are going to twist open towards the side of your of your elbow as high as you can. Beautiful, and then twist down towards, aiming towards that opposite arm. There we go, everybody, it looks great. A good target for you to try to reach with your elbow, we're gonna do about 10 on this side, is your opposite elbow, forearm, or wrist. So you are trying to touch your other arm, if you can reach the ground with your elbow, you're a rock star and you should be teaching this class. We wanna to try to aim for at least the opposite elbow, forearm or wrist. We do about 10 thoracic twists. This is gonna help open up the rib cage. You may even feel this going down into the low back, a nice little stretch, opening up the chest. That looks great. This is a great way to undo all of the sitting and computer work, driving, phone, all that stuff that we do that makes our shoulders cranky and our neck cranky and our upper back cranky. So if you've done 10 on the left, you're gonna switch and do 10 on the right. You might notice that one side's a lot easier than the other. Looks like Hannah can go a lot higher on this side. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she can open up and then close. On your way down, when you're trying to get down to that opposite elbow form or wrist, we're trying not to increase the bend in that elbow. So we're trying to keep it, it's not gonna be locked out or straight. Um, it'll still have a little softness to it. We're not trying to collapse down to the ground. We're still trying to keep some length in that opposite arm as you twist down and reach down. Good. 
good. So lengthening something, stretching something out, opening something, in this case, the chest and the upper back before we strengthen it is the most effective way to get stronger through the core. Hey, Remy. Are we ready to go swimming already today? That was me as a kid. It's like, oh, the sun is out. Let's go to the pool. All right, beautiful. I want everybody to drop down into a child's pose. We will warm up our diaphragm breath from this position or a resting position of your choice. Let's see. I don't know if we've got anyone. We do have, I think, one pregnant person with us today. So a child's pose is a great place to warm up your diaphragm breath because your belly can expand when you deep, take a deep breath in and press into the creases of your upper thighs. Give you a little tactile feedback, a little touch feedback with your own body. So breathing in through your nose, trying to send that air low and expand into the belly, the sides and the low back and then exhale it all out through the nose again. When you breathe out through your nose, if you're familiar with yoga, you can do like a yoga breath, um, an Ujjayi breath. So you're kind of making a noise like you are Darth Vader. It's really the best way to describe it. Um, some people say it's the noise in the back of the throat like you're fogging up a window. That can help increase the expansion of the diaphragm in through your nose and then out through your nose, making a little bit of noise. Good. Filling up the low belly, low back and side bodies. Good. I want everybody to shift forward just a little bit. Let's move into a little bit more of a puppy dog stretch. So you're going to stick your booty up in the air, arms go out long in front of you. If you had your forehead on the mat, before to go to be into child's pose. Now you're gonna kind of move to your, either your nose or your chin. Jess, that looks great. Shifting forward a little bit. Oh no, we have two pregnant people with us today. Awesome. Um, yeah, so you can see Hannah's behind me. She's in a little bit more of a puppy dog. This is gonna be getting a little bit more of an intense stretch into the front of the shoulders. And again, only going as far as you feel comfortable. Couple more big deep diaphragm breaths, belly breaths in this position. And then let's find our way back to that all fours. Now that we've had some breathing, even just diaphragm breathing is gonna help stabilize our core, our trunk, activating those muscles. So we're gonna go back to our our lengthening exercise, our stretching exercise, those behind the head thoracic twists. We're gonna do 10 more on each side. You guys can pick whichever one you wanna do first. So that back of the hand is on the back of the head. Doesn't really matter where it is, but somewhere in the back of the head. You're twisting open towards that side. Everyone looks great. Let's see if you can go maybe a little bit farther down towards the ground, or even if you can't go quite as far, I want you to feel when you come down and across, you may start to feel your obliques contract a little bit. So this may be just as much of a opening stretching on the up as a contracting feeling, start parts of your core, the side part of your core start to turn on and engage. Everyone looks great. I'm gonna do a couple of these too. So we've got 10 on each side. Everyone looks really good.
go ahead and drop into a child's pose when you're done. So I know that you are done with your about 10 on each side. If you want to do a couple more on a side that maybe feels tighter, you can. Hopefully some of you noticed, I know Hannah said she did notice it was a little bit easier that time on one of her sides. Good. And these may have even gotten you a little out of breath and that's okay. We were activating and stretching. So a couple deep breaths, bring your heart rate back down and then I'm gonna have everybody find their way, make their way onto your back. Or if you are not comfortable being on your back or if it's not a good position for you because of maybe third trimester pregnancy, find a spot on the wall or on the back of the couch. Perfect. I think everybody else is going to be pretty good to be on the mat, on your back. And we're gonna go, we've already done a lot of warm up for our torso, um, believe it or not. So we're gonna go right into our dead bug positioning and just warm up our breath a little bit more. So your arms and your legs are floating up in the air. If you are on um, the wall or on the couch with your back against it, um, <clears throat> then your feet are in a butterfly position. So your toes and your heels are together. Yep, and then knees are flaring out. Beautiful. If you are on your back, your feet are just anywhere above your the level of your knees and your knees are slightly turned out. Uh, <clears throat> so we're not at that um, perfect 90 degree tabletop position. It's more like we are making a circle with our arms and a circle with our legs. We're holding on to a big heavy ball that weighs about 20 to 30 pounds. Good. And let's do a quick body scan. I want everybody to pay attention to the space between your eyebrows, your brow, maybe give them a crinkle and then relax. We want our forehead relaxed, our jaw relaxed, shoulders rolled down away from the ears as far as possible. Rib cage is down in line with your torso. It's not flared. The low back maybe has a little less arc to it. It doesn't necessarily have to be flat against the ground, but it's not arched. Beautiful. Okay. And then we're taking a big giant inhale through the nose, filling up the belly and the low back, and then out through the nose. Good. A couple more big deep breaths in through the nose, fill up your belly and your low back, and then out through the nose. Good. If at any point in time you want to modify these, if you know the modifications, dropping just the arms or dropping the legs and focusing on one versus the other, feel free to. I'm just going to give you kind of a guide. So if you're comfortable having both arms and legs up, we're going to start adding some movement to these. Okay. So I want you guys to do 20 movements total. I don't care. If they're just arms, just the legs, arms and legs, moving arms and legs at the same time. Ideally, we wanna be able to move opposite arm and opposite leg like Hannah is doing behind me simultaneously. Only as far as you can go until you feel like you have lost your trunk, your midline. So if the low back has to arch, that's a good sign that you've just gone a little bit too far with the arms or the legs. If you feel like you can't breathe into your belly, if you're holding, if you have to hold your breath to move, that is also a sign that we've gone a little bit too far. The more you can create 
um, a stability breath. So by taking that breath in, creating pressure through the core, <clears throat> the more you can do that, the more your brain will let you move your arms and your legs. Going nice and slow on the way back in towards the midline as well as the way out. Looks good. Twenty total. It's your own pace. Take breaks. We can do just arms, just legs, or opposite arm, opposite leg together. If the opposite arm, opposite leg feels pretty good, you could even try and throw in some same side arm and leg. Moving the left hand back and the left foot down something new for your brain. How does that feel, Hannah? Yeah, pretty good. Awesome. It looks good. Feel free to take some breaks. As you're moving one arm or one leg, if there's another arm or leg that's floating and staying still, trying to keep it, uh, keep it from moving. So as Hannah's moving her right hand, her left hand is staying exactly where it was to start with. Sometimes our brain just likes to move everything at once. Good. All right. All right, everybody is on their back. Take a big stretch up with the arms and legs come long. A big giant inhale through the, uh, a nice, just a nice big good morning stretch. Big giant inhale through the nose and then exhale it out through your mouth. <sighs> Side out. Just a nice big stretch. Beautiful. I want you to hug your knees in towards your chest. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yep. So if you are on your back, um, you're going to either grab knees, shins, ankles, feet. You can even come and grab the big toes if you have that mobility. We can come into like a happy baby style stretch here yep send the knees wide if you're on the back of the if your back is on the couch or the wall you're just gonna have your feet flat and bring them as close to your butt as you can so you're in almost like a nice super deep squat yep that looks good Jess um, and we're just gonna do a couple deep diaphragm breaths in this position focusing on sending that breath down low and deep into the bottom of the pelvic floor, right? <clears throat> so just another position that can help give our brain some awareness of just how deep we want that breath to go, keeping it completely out of the shoulders and the chest, sending it low and deep into the pelvis. Good, inhales through your nose and out through your nose. In this position, it can be easier to feel your low back expand with the breath and expand into the ground. And again, you can have your hands pulling your knees in towards your chest, your shins, your ankles, your feet, your toe. You can play around with the positioning here, find whatever is comfortable just so you can feel that, that breath moving a little bit deeper than it was before. Good, kind of trying to bring the heart rate down a little bit after we just did that movement. Oh, 
looks good. All right, and then slowly come on out of that. Arms up above head, legs stretch long. Nice big good morning stretch. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. Empty it all out and sigh it all out. Just reset everything. <sighs> Very good. Okay. We're gonna do a couple rock and rolls. So come back up to uh, your functional progression. One, your dead bug arms and legs, holding onto that big heavy ball. If you're on your back, you're gonna do this with me, just a couple. Um, if you have your back up against the wall, um, let's just do a couple more um, arms here, but a couple rolls to each side. Okay? So trying to keep our midline together, hey, uh, shoulders and hips stay in line. And we're starting this movement, this roll. If you looked at Hannah, she looked first with her eyes and then turned her head in the direction that she wanted to roll. I'm trying to roll like a rotisserie chicken. It's the best way to describe it. You have a pole going through the crown of your head, coming out your tailbone. And we're trying to slow and control slowly and control uh, this roll side to side, a couple in each direction. And we're gonna press up on the next one. Make sure you've evened it out and gotten maybe two or three on each side. We're gonna come to that side oblique sit. So it doesn't matter which side you do first. We're gonna spend a little time moving through this functional progression too. So the oblique sit is taxing on the shoulders because it requires a lot of shoulder stability, which requires a lot of thoracic mobility. So we spent the first half of the class opening up the chest, opening up our thoracic, so we have the flexibility up top. Now we can get everything nice and tight and stabilized. So let's have everybody start on their elbow. I'm gonna turn this so you can see her a little bit more. So you're down on your elbow, whole forearm is flat all the way to the palm and the fingers. We're not making a fist. We're having our hand up on the ground. Whole hand is an anchor on the ground. The elbow is right underneath the shoulder and then she's looking straight ahead. So you're gonna be kind of looking, the world should be a little angled because we're at an angle. Beautiful. There's as much space as possible between your torso and the ground. So she just pushed up a little bit. I like that. So we're actively pushing into the ground, creating space here, not slouching down. Go ahead, relax, Anna, for me. Yeah. So we're not dumping into the shoulder. We're creating active shoulders and space between there. Good. Top hand is gonna be on your belly or your hip, just to give you a little feedback. Are you breathing into your sides and your belly? And the knees are bent. So knees are bent and knees in line with hips, in line with shoulders, in line with ear. There's a nice straight line there. The top foot, you can do a couple different things with it. You can clamshell your legs so you have a pivot point at your ankles and then your knees are nice and wide or you can take that top leg and bring it in front. So the foot is flat on the ground and it's somewhere between the ankle and the knee, somewhere along that shin line, okay? That will depend on your anatomy and your flexibility, where that foot ends up, okay? Everybody looks good. So a couple deep breaths in this position, making sure that you're feeling that breath still go low into your belly, back and obliques. Beautiful. And we're not feeling it, shouldn't be feeling it dump into the shoulders. So if you're feeling any tension in the traps in this position, 
we got to focus on pushing into the ground through the hand, the forearm, and the elbow so that weight is evenly distributed and your shoulder blade is getting pulled down your rib cage. That looks good. So from here, if you've done movement with this before, we're gonna rock and lean a little bit forward, creating a base that now also involves a little bit of pressure into this bottom knee. So Hannah's gonna use her foot of her top leg, the knee of her bottom leg, and her whole forearm and hand of her bottom arm to push into the ground and lift her hips up and forward. Beautiful. And then slowly lower down. Let's give five of those a try on this side. <laughs> You can play around with where that top foot is to give you a little bit more support. That looks good. <laughs> Just tapping out after two. This is hard. This one is also a hard one to teach online because I can't come and tweak you. We Unless you are outside doing cartwheels with your kids, we don't really practice this oblique plane of motion very much. And it is usually everyone's weaknesses, everyone's weakness. But everybody looks good. Let's do five-ish, okay? If you're tapping out after two or three, let's switch sides. It's a rough, oh, Hannah's saying this is a rough one. So go ahead and switch sides. Elbow lined up underneath the shoulder. Remember whole forearm and hand is pressing down into the ground, not just your elbow. Bottom leg, we've got the knee as a push point and the top leg, we've got the whole foot. Mm, so if you caught that, Hannah just came up under her tippy toes with that top leg. We wanna keep the whole foot, whole foot planted on the ground. There you go, good. Just like we keep that whole hand planted on the ground. So it's a, a big belly breath in and then a little bit of a, a lean forward and then a lift up and forward with the hips. Everybody looks really good. One side is probably gonna be way easier than the other, yes. Awesome, all right, you guys are done with your two to five-ish on this side. Drop back down into a child's pose for me or a resting position of your choice. That movement can usually get the heart rate up a little bit, so let's bring it down. I like Deb's resting position, it looks good. Focusing back on the breath. Slow inhales through the nose, filling up your low belly with air. Slow exhales through the nose. Maybe with some grumbling noises. Because you're mad at me, it's fine. Good. Trying to breathe. Nice and deep, getting the air and the stress out of the shoulders and sending it low. When you feel like your heart rate is starting to go down a little bit, I want you to come back up and meet me into all fours. And you're gonna swing your right foot outside of the plane of your right hand. Good. And today, we are actually gonna move a little bit forward and open up the front of the hips. So shift your front hands and your front leg 
a, maybe an inch or two farther forward. So we're starting to feel the stretch a little bit in the back front hip, the back leg, the leg that's behind us. Yes, there you go. This hip here. Is everybody following me? So normally when we do this, we wanna stay in that tight all fours position. So we only feel it on the hip of the foot that's in front. But we're gonna kind of shift everything forward a little bit. So you start to feel this more like a runner stretch, a little bit more into the hip of the knee that's um, still on the floor. Yeah, there you go, Deb, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Everybody feeling that? Awesome, okay, Monty's nodding, very good. Okay, so now with a straight arm, we're gonna stay on this side, with a straight arm, you're gonna take the hand that's closest to the foot in front of you and straight arm, you're gonna open it up and twist on the opposite of the camera. Beautiful, good. So you should end up looking at the knee, the bent knee. Good, we're gonna do 10 of these on each side. Hand just goes from the floor, trying to lift up and stretch and reach up towards the ceiling. Beautiful. If your eyes, if your eyes can track your hand, that is perfect. So if your hand is up towards the ceiling and your eyes and your neck can also be looking at your fingertips, that is great. That's gonna help get a little bit more twisting and extension through the middle back. Good. So about 10 on this side, and then you are going to switch to the other side. So from that, a tripod tabletop position, a little bit of a lean forward, whatever feels comfortable for you. You can shift your hands and your foot forward to feel this a little bit more in that back front hip. And then the hand that is next to the knee, or next to the foot, is gonna open up and try to stretch and reach up towards the ceiling. If you have a lot of mobility, you may be able to look up at your fingertips and even look kind of a little bit back behind you. <laughs> yes. So it's great. It's great if your arm and your hand can move really far back. But we also wanna make sure that the, your eyes and your neck can follow it, okay? So move them together. Does that make sense? Yeah, awesome. Good. When you've done about 10 on each side, go ahead and drop back into a resting position. Child's pose is great. Love it. That may have gotten your heart rate up a little bit. It does with mine. So let's bring it back down. A couple of nice deep belly breaths in, sip of water. Furry friend. Good. 
Oh yeah, who was here last week when we did those dragon push-ups? Monty, were you here? No? Oh, you were just kind of doing it. Was anybody sore from last week? Anna, Deb? <laughs> okay, I'm getting looks. <laughs> um, yeah. We did some dragon push-ups for the chest. Those were fun. Awesome. Well, this week we're stretching it out, so it's all going to balance. Beautiful, beautifully. I love it. Okay, our last little thing. We're going to come into all fours. We've just been stretching out. So all of these are not, they're not isolated stretches. So when we're doing these movements, we're not just stretching a muscle or a joint. We are also engaging the stability muscles deep, deep, deep in the core that allow us to have that mobility, okay? So we are killing lots of birds with one stone here with these movements, okay? So on this last one, we've been opening up and kind of reaching to the opposite side. So now Hannah's gonna take her left hand and reach it underneath, we're gonna thread the needle. So she's gonna reach and stretch out towards an imaginary thing, that opposite side, mm -hmm. and then come back to the middle, to all fours, and take her right hand and reach and stretch across. Good, so you should start to feel this in the back side of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Good. And to move across the body, you have to have a stability breath. So we're bracing and we're engaging the stability in our low back and our deep lower core in order to be able to twist across like this. Good, that looks good everybody, does that feel good? Reaching as far across as you can. If you can get the back of your shoulder to touch the ground, you're a rock star. That looks good. You may also feel this in, I feel it in my low back, I feel it in my hips even. Good. Just another way to combine some stability work and some mobility work. Connecting the upper torso to the lower torso. It looks good. All right, when you are even on both sides, you can come on up and shake it out. Beautiful. How does everybody feel? Good, alive, ready to take on the day. Wonderful. It is going to be a beautiful weekend. Sunny, not too humid. I hope everyone is able to get out and get some safe vitamin D exposure, some sun exposure. Oop. Uh, sorry, I missed some, uh, I missed some um, chats. Lindsay, chest and glutes last week. Ouch. Awesome. Feel a lot of pressure on my neck on the side facing up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pray the drive through. <laughs> yes. Crystal's having a drive through baby shower this weekend. Love it. I saw a drive through graduation party in my neighborhood last weekend. <laughs> um, Anna, we'll chat about your neck. Oh, was that when we were on our sides doing a, yeah, yeah okay, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. So the shoulder, the side, the oblique sit position can have, a, can put a lot of stress and pressure in the shoulder and neck. If we're not, either we're not in the, quite the right position or if there's something already going on on that side, that's, can make that um, a little bit angry. Um, 
but we'll tweak that next time you're in the office, okay? Okay, thanks. You are welcome. Um, yes, um, I hope everybody is able to go outside and get some, some sun this weekend and some vitamin D to help boost your happy hormones and immune systems. So that's what we'll be doing, hopefully. I think this is, well, this may be Hannah's last breath and flow with us. Maybe, maybe not. No one knows. No one knows. <laughs> no one knows. It's the end of her quarter. Um, all right. Well, you guys did great today. I'm trying to end this. There we go.